What's up, FSD? Hope we're doing all right today. Um, in this section, we're going to talk about more probability stuff, especially geometric probability, which I think is the most interesting, but, you know, that's because I'm a math teacher and I'm crazy, right? So first things we're going to do is I do want to go over the warm-up today because you're going to see a little bit of this in the lesson. Um, then we'll do a few examples, show you a little bit about geometric probability, and then we'll wrap this thing up, all right? So the first thing we're going to do here is I, we're going to get a little bit extra practice with permutations and combinations. Remember, permutations is when order matters. Combinations is when order does not matter. Remember, when you're doing permutations, you're using this NPR in your calculator. For combinations, you're using NCR. Okay, so I'm going to show you and remind you how to do that. So let's go ahead and read the question here. There are 18 people running in a cross-country race. How many possible ways are, are there to place the runners in first, second, and third? Well, clearly here, order matters, right? There's a difference between getting first place, second place, and third place. So if we think here, how many people can we choose from? Well, there's 18 people running, so that's going to be my n value. We know it's a permutation, so I'm going to use p. And how many people are we talking about at a time? Well, we're talking about a first, second, and third. So my R is going to be three. So remember these steps now. To do this in your calculator, you're going to hit math. And then you're going to go over to the PRB tab. And then you're going to scroll down for um, the NPR button. Okay, so when you enter this in your calculator, to enter this, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to type in 18, then I'm going to hit math, scroll over to the PRB, NPR, and then I'm going to hit the 3. And if you do that, you should get 4,896. So remember, that's permutations. Combinations is probably going to be the second one. Let's take a look. If Fred owns 11 hoodies, how many ways can he choose four to bring on vacation? Is it saying that Fred needs to specifically have one for this day, one for this day, one for this day? No. So I know it's going to be a combination, so I'm going to use this NCR thing over here. I know there's 11 hoodies to choose from. It's a combination, and we're choosing four at a time. So go ahead and type that into your calculator. 11, math, PRB, NCR, four, enter. 330. If you have any questions about the calculator steps, just ask your teacher. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay, but that was just a refresher on permutations and combinations because you're going to see these in a minute. So here we go. Uh, we already talked about complement rule. Um, we already talked about experimental probability as well. So this is going to be a little bit different now. Um, this is probability involving a permutation or combination. So what I'm saying here is that your number of possible outcomes is going to be a permutation or a combination. So let's just go here. A DJ random, randomly selects two of eight ads to play before her show. Two of the ads are by a local retailer. What is the probability that she will play both the retailer's ads before her show? This can get a little tricky, okay? So let's just think, how many different ways can this DJ select two out of eight ads to play before her show? Does order matter? No, it's not like she's saying, look, I gotta play this one first and this one second. She's just randomly selecting two. So since order doesn't matter, I know it's a combination. Uh, there's eight songs to choose from, combination, two at a time. So let's go ahead and first figure out what that number is. So I'm going to hit 8, math, scroll over to PRB, then select the NCR button, 2, and then hit enter. And I'm getting, I'm getting 28. So there's 28 different ways she could do this. Well, now I'm going to ask, probability of, she wants the probability of what, playing both the local retailers ads, so lo local ads, and there's 28 possible ways she can play these ads, right? We just figured that out. Okay, so now what is the probability that she selects 
both those two local retailers ads, well, isn't there only one way that could happen, right? So the probability would just be one over 28, and that's it. Whenever you're doing probability with permutation and combination, it's always, it's, it's gonna affect the denominator, okay? So this is kind of just the PowerPoint going through the same thing I just said. Notice they got one out of 28 as well. These PowerPoints are posted, so you should be good. Um, here's another one. If you want to pause the video and try it on your own, go for it. If not, I'm going to go through it. A clerk has four different letters that need to go in four different envelopes. What is the probability that all four letters are placed in the correct envelopes? Well, this looks like a permutation to me because each letter needs to go in its specific envelope. Looks like we have four different letters to choose from. We said it's a permutation. We're selecting all four at a time. They all need to be in the right spot. So let's go ahead and put that into our calculator. Four, math, PRB, NPR, and three. So I'm getting 24 different ways to do this. So what is the probability that all four letters are placed in the correct envelopes? I'll just say probability correct. Well, there's 24 different ways to do this. How many ways is the correct way? Well, obviously, there's only going to be one correct way to do this. So your answer would just be 1 over 24. And that's it. Let's move on to really the main idea of this PowerPoint. And I know these can be kind of confusing, and especially with the wording. So again, if you have questions, make sure you reach out to your teachers. But this is really what, uh, what the main point of this, this PowerPoint or this uh, presentation will say. Geometric probability. All it is, if I want to find the probability of landing in the shaded area, remember our favorable outcomes is what's in the numerator, and then our total number of outcomes, or in this case, area of the entire region, is going to be in the, de the denominator. So in this case, I want to know the probability of landing in a shaded area. So I, my favorable outcome is landing somewhere in here. My total number of outcomes, or my denominator, is going to be the area of this entire shape. So what we need to do here is we need to find the area of the circle and put that over the area of the square, right? The circle is what we want, where we want to land. The square is the total number of possibilities. So let's take a look here. Uh, a circle with a radius of 10 centimeters is placed inside a square with a length of 20 centimeters. That makes sense, right? Because if this is the radius, then the diameter would be 20, which matches, so that's all good. What is the probability that a dart thrown will land inside of the circle? Well, if it was for me, it's 100% because I'm a, I'm a straight shooter. Just kidding. That wasn't funny. Here we go. Um, so let's find the area of the circle. So if we remember area of a circle, that's pi r squared. I'm just going to substitute... Uh, 10 for my r. And when you're doing this, make sure you're doing the exponent first. So 10 squared is 100. 100 times pi. You can do it in a calculator if you want, but it's about 314 centimeters squared. Okay? So that's the area of the circle. That's my favorable outcome. That's the area of the region we want. So 314 over so probability of shaded. Now i got to find the total area of the square. Well, that's pretty easy, right? Square, all the sides are congruent, so 20 times 20 would be 400. Um, if you want to reduce that fraction, you can. If you want to write it as a percentage, you can. I'm just going to divide it. And I'm getting 0.785. Or you can say 78.5% chance. If you give me any of those answers, I will give you full credit for that. So don't worry about that. But that's it. That's, that's all geometric probability is. Um, I think we got a harder example here. 
This is all the stuff that I just went through. So here we go. This one's a little bit more confusing. Uh, the puck needs to land in the blue area in order to score points. The length of the orange rectangle is 10 feet. The width is 5, so 5 feet, 10 feet. The length of the blue area is 4.2. The width is 3.5. What is the probability that the puck will land in the orange area? Now, careful here. What's the probability that it's going to land in the orange area? Well, I don't have a set formula to find the area of just this kind of border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of the orange rectangle and subtract the area of the blue rectangle. That will give me all this orange that's left. All right, and that is what we that's where we want the puck to land, and we want it to land in the orange, so that's going to be our numerator. So uh, the probability, um, we'll just say orange, landing in the orange. We're going to find that by taking uh, the area of the, the big rectangle, subtract the area of the small rectangle, that's the blue one, and our total area, our total sample size is the big rectangle. So hopefully this should make sense. We want it to land in the orange spot, so we're going to take the full rectangle, subtract the blue one, that'll give me the area of the orange over the whole thing. Okay? So let's do some calculations over here. So the big rectangle. has an area of base times height or length times width, so 5 times 10 is 50. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute it right here and here. So 50 minus something over 50. Now I need to find the area of the small rectangle. And that's just going to be 3.5 times 4.2 which is 14.7. From this point, you just need to do this in your calculator. And I'm getting 0 0.706, or you can say 70.6% chance. You're not going to see any questions harder than that. Um, but that's pretty much it. So that covers geometric probability. Um, that's the last slide. Uh, go ahead and work on your homework assignment. Again, I, I know I keep saying this, but please reach out to your teachers if you have any questions at all. We would love to help you. Um, but that's all I got. Have a good rest of your day.